The Land Rover Defender. This thing is an absolute icon for off-roading enthusiasts. It's known to be capable of some very amazing and adventurous things. You can go dune bashing, drive through deep water. You can even go on a safari adventure. And yes, while this new Defender isn't as well respected by off-roaders as the older Defenders, who really cares because it's still very impressive what this thing can do off-road. However, I have to admit, the Defender that I'm driving here today probably likes to stay on pavement even more than it likes to drive through mud, rock, or sand. And the way you can tell is that this Defender has a dynamic mode, which is obviously for driving on the road. It has these nice 22-inch wheels that aren't beadlock capable, and come on, you'd be pretty upset if you got these dirty or scuffed. But the biggest giveaway is this suede trim steering wheel. If you showed this to any off-roading enthusiast, they would straight up laugh in your face and call you a little bit. My name is Omar, and this is the 2022 Land Rover Defender. Oh, love it. V8. Now, I'm not gonna spend this video talking about how the new Defender isn't as tough or rugged. Yes, we get it. It now sits on a unibody platform instead of a truck body on frame construction. And yes, it has an air suspension. Oh no. Those two things are like kryptonite to off-roaders. You see, you have to understand one thing. The new Defender has grown up with the market. 90% of the people buying this will be driving it on road. And honestly, the other 10% will still enjoy taking it off-roading because it can still do some amazing things and take you way out into the wilderness. Now that we've got that out of the way, the Defender V8 that I'm driving here today is powered by a 5-liter supercharged V8 making 518 horsepower, and this thing moves. And it sounds absolutely amazing doing it. I've been driving this around for a week, and honestly, I'm in love with this thing. And that's a big problem because being in love with the new Defender V8 is very expensive. The two-door D90 V8 starts at over $104,000, while the four-door starts at over $107,000. Is it worth that price tag? Let's find out. Let me give you a tour of the Defender V8. I'll show you the outside, I'll take you around the inside, and then I'll take you for a drive and let you know if you should spend your hard-earned money on this. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe if you like new car reviews, because I'll bring them to you. I promise. All right, let's do this. Now we'll talk more about that five liter supercharged V8 sitting under the hood when I take it for a drive a little bit later, but let's talk about some of the other ways that this differs from non-V8 Defenders. The first is the exhaust sound. Let's pop it into dynamic mode and take a quick listen. Now let's take a look at some of the luxury items in the V8 Defender that you don't want to get dirty. The non-V8 Defender D90 that I previously tested had an interior that was all about durability and was covered in durable textile fabric materials. Reason being the Defender is an outdoor vehicle and the 10% that will take it off-road and get it dirty and muddy, that material would be easier to clean and maintain. Not here though, the V8 Defender features seats that are trimmed in unique ebony Windsor leather and Miko suede cloth and robustic accents. All those names sound pretty rich to me. And again, this four spoke steering wheel is wrapped in Alcantara and it actually has paddle shifters that are covered in satin chrome. And if this was my Defender, you better believe that there will be no dirty hands allowed inside. I mean, even the airbag housing and the gear selector are covered in leather. But seriously, all jokes aside, the Defender V8 is still very capable when it comes to doing that off-road stuff. You've got a twin-speed transmission that will let you pick between high and low so you can go through difficult terrain. You have the configurable terrain response system that will let you pick between a bunch of modes that will configure the power, steering, differentials, and traction control settings for any type of terrain. I think I've said terrain like 80 times already. And get this, the Defender will allow you to set about four individual or custom modes, which I think is a little bit too much. These are my custom modes right here. Now, since you will be paying a lot for the V8 Defender, it comes standard with the Terrain Response 2 system, which will give you an auto mode and let the Defender figure out what it needs to do to tackle whatever type of ground you're driving on. And you also have the Dynamic Mode, which is exclusive to the V8 Defender. Next up, you have all the cool camera angles to mess around with, but you also have Clear Sight Ground View, which will actually let you see what it is that you're driving over. That is really cool and very useful for when you're off-roading so you don't end up scratching your 22-inch wheels. You have hill launch assist and gradient release control that will help you go up a slope without you worrying about your Defender rolling back down the hill. 
you can still drive through 35.4 inches of water like you can in other Defenders, and if you use this wade sensing app, the Defender will actively measure the depth of water that you're going through. And as you're water fording, the screen will let you know if the water is getting too deep for the Defender to handle. And that's very useful for someone like me, just in case my town floods. The Defender V8 can tow a total of 8,201 pounds, which is pretty impressive. And the advanced tow assist camera will show you the direction of your trailer when reversing and take care of the counter steer for you. You can activate low traction launch in case you get stuck and the Defender will get unstuck all by itself. It even tells you to keep your foot off the gas. Just let it do its thing. So yeah, this thing will still go anywhere you want it to go. Just please don't get this beautiful V8 interior dirty. Now, let's talk about the exterior. In my opinion, Land Rover has done an outstanding job at modernizing the Defender. The Defender is an icon that was left untouched for a very long time, and I'm glad that Land Rover didn't go crazy making it too on-road crossover-ish looking. I love the fact that it keeps its tough and rugged looks without trying to impress the masses. I also like the fact that unlike every other SUV or car coming out these days, the Defender doesn't have a massive grille on the front. In fact, this grille is actually smaller than the ones you see on the older Defenders. How about that? Now, in my opinion, one of the most defining characteristics of the exterior are these headlamps. All Defenders come with LED headlamps. The higher end trims, like the V8 Defender here, get their premium LED headlights with signature daytime running lights that you see right here. And then in the back, you have a full size spare, which you can put in a box, but I like it exposed, and taillights that are broken up into four squares, which is a call out to the older Defenders. By the way, every time that I have tested the Defender, it's always been the two door D90. I honestly haven't even been inside the D110. And while I really like the looks of both, I think the D110 looks just a little bit cooler. The D90 gives me this, hey, I'm short and stubby vibe. Now let's hop back inside the Defender really quick because there are a few things that I wanna point out that really make this an awesome utilitarian SUV. Since this is about off-roading and living that active lifestyle, there is a lot of storage that you'll find throughout this cabin. You can literally sit anywhere in this SUV and find a place to throw large or little items, which makes it very convenient for your adventurous lifestyle. This exposed crossbeam here looks awesome with the cool Defender logo, but check out all these little storage areas that you have. Now I'm sure this is very useful for people that go off-roading, but I also find this very useful for people that will use this as their daily driver. It's very convenient. You have a ton of places to throw in anything that you want. You can even hide some stuff behind the infotainment display right here if you want to hide it from your spouse or the cops. And while we're here, let's actually talk about the infotainment and tech really quick. For 2022, the Defender gets this updated PV infotainment system. Here in the V8 Defender, you get the larger 11.4 inch touchscreen display with PV Pro. Now, there's no doubt that Land Rover and Jaguar have had this terrible reputation when it comes to the performance of their infotainment systems, but this upgraded system is actually pretty awesome. It's simple and very clean. I've had no issues with performance, no glitching, no hanging up on screens, anything like that at all. Land Rover and Jaguar say that their goal was to imitate your smartphone and get rid of endless menu screens and options. They claim that 80% of your tasks can be done with just two taps, and most of them can. You get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. That's what most people will end up using anyway. But yeah, overall, this infotainment is very minimalistic and the performance is pretty good. So two thumbs up from me. Now, I wish I could say the same thing about the digital instrument display here. My experience with this has been a little annoying. Once you set it up, it's okay. You're not gonna touch it much, but say you want to change the layout or change your left and right info panel. It is extremely slow to respond to the inputs you're making through the steering wheel. Not sure if this is a pre-production issue or this is just how it is, but it's almost unusable. Now let's quickly talk about the center controls right here because there is some interesting stuff going on here. Land Rover and Jaguar products are known for using climate control dials that have multiple functions. Obviously, if you just turn this dial, you can control your climate temperature, but push it and you can turn your heated and cooled seats on or off. I think this is very cool, but I'm sure some people out there will complain because they love their physical buttons. But personally, I think this is a cool way of doing it. If you push this fan button right here, the right dial will let you adjust your climate fan speed. Push this little defender right above it and the dial on the left will let you circle through all of your drive modes. Yeah, I think this is pretty clever and takes away the need for having a lot of buttons. As for comfort, all defenders are extremely comfortable and it's surprising because the D90 looks pretty small from the outside, but once you're in here, it's actually pretty spacious. I was just a bit sad because this one didn't have the jump seat in the front like my last D90 test model did, but hey, at least it has a refrigerator to keep my drinks cold. Again, I haven't even been in the four-door D110, but even the two-door D90 is pretty spacious. And what's crazy is that the massive amount of legroom that you have in the second row. I would say just getting in the second row is a little bit annoying. You just have to pull this latch and pull the front seat forward and then push this button and wait for it to just slide. You just wait, wait, and wait. But once you get back here, you're working with 36.6 inches of legroom. I'm about six foot tall. That's my seating position. As you can see, 
I have plenty of room back here. It is very spacious and the seats are pretty comfortable too. Usually second row seats in two-door models are just kind of an afterthought, not here. This is a great place to sit for a long drive. Oh, and once you're back here, you're not just slumming it out in the dark, even though the side windows are tinted because you have this giant panoramic sunroof and all defenders come with a safari window to let in more sunshine or let you look at some animals while you're on a safari adventure. Most likely this will be used for sunshine. As for cargo capacity in the D90, you're working with a small 15.6 cubic feet behind the second row, but with the second row folded, you have 58.3 cubic feet. Now, before I take the Defender V8 for a drive, let me point out a few important things that I'll have to show all of you. You have six cup holders, two in the front for the front passengers. And then once you get the front seat out of the way, you have two in the center armrest right there. And then you have one on each side on the floor, which is a pretty interesting placement. Here are the keys to the Defender V8. You got a nice little Land Rover logo, but check out the lock sound this thing makes. That's so cute. Door open and close sound from the outside. And from the inside, very solid indeed. Charging game wise, you're working with a USB-C port right there, a USB-A port, and then a cigarette lighter charger right there. The passenger actually has a USB-C port right here in the storage area, so that's pretty cool. You get a wireless charger right there, but when you close the armrest, it gets covered up which is good, so you shouldn't be you know, touching your phone while you're driving. Those hanging out in the second row have two USB-C ports and two cigarette lighter chargers right there. And then on the back of each front seats, you get a place to put your iPad or any other tablet and a USB-A port. That's dope. It is now time for an indicator and horn sound test, this time here with the 2022 Land Rover Defender V8. Indicator first. Same old Jaguar Land Rover indicator. Now for the horn sound. Oh yeah, much better than that locking horn sound. This is much beefier. All right, let's pop it into dynamic mode and let's go. Again, this is powered by the infamous Jaguar Land Rover 5 liter supercharged V8. Here it makes a total of 518 horsepower and 461 pound-feet of torque. It'll do zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds and again, It'll sound outstanding doing it. I can't get over that sound at all. And again, while you can get coiled springs on other D90s, if off-roading is your thing, the V8 can only be had with an electronic air suspension. And because of that, this is a very, very comfortable daily driver. You have like 80 different drive modes to pick from, but people buying the Defender V8 will only use two, dynamic and comfort. Those are the only two modes that I've been using all week because there is no rock, mud, or sand where I live. And no matter which mode you're in, this thing is butter smooth. Pop it into comfort mode and it gets even smoother. The air suspension smooths out all the bumps and imperfections on the road, and you barely feel anything at all. Of course, this spacious and comfortable interior helps quite a bit. Nonetheless, in either mode, the power delivery is so smooth and so seamless. Now, I already tested the 395 horsepower six-cylinder turbocharged, electronically supercharged, and all the charges. And at the time, I thought that was enough for me to defend whatever it is that I'm defending. But honestly, I feel much better defending in the V8. And this eight-speed automatic transmission shifts awesome with these metal paddle shifters. Four, five, six, and pops and bangs. Oh, it's so good. All right, let's get back into comfort mode before I get into some trouble. Now, this thing is extremely heavy, weighing in at 5,445 pounds. Yes, it's a beast, so it's a little wafty and you do feel a little tilted body roll when you try to make sharp turns. And of course, the fuel economy isn't that great either. You get 15 miles per gallon city and 19 miles per gallon highway. I'm averaging, after a few days of driving, a total of 14 miles a gallon. But honestly, I don't care. It just feels so good to hit the gas and keep going. It's not just the acceleration that feels swift and smooth, it's the entire experience. It's just perfect, and that's what hurts. Right here, that price tag. So I guess the Defender V8 is quite expensive. The D90 V8 that I'm testing here starts at $104,400. If you want the four door and the V8, get ready for a starting price tag of $107,700. But at that price tag, as it should be, everything you can get in the Defender is standard. 
You get the electronically controlled air suspension, you get terrain response too with all the drive modes and it also gives you the auto mode and a dynamic mode for performance oriented driving. You get adaptive dynamics and an electronic active differential. On the outside you get the updated premium LED headlamps with LED daytime running lights, you also get front fog lights. Inside you're working with 14 way power adjustable seats for both the driver and the passenger. You also get memory seats for both of the front seats. Heated and cooled seats are also standard on the V8 Defender as is a heated steering wheel. You also get this refrigerator in the center console that I mentioned earlier and the sliding panoramic sunroof is standard. You get tri-zone climate control, two zones for the front and one zone for the rear passengers. Tech-wise, you're working with a larger 11.4 inch touchscreen display with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, as well as navigation. Sound system duties are taken care of by this Meridian surround sound system, which sounds pretty solid. All the off-road stuff is standard, including hill launch assist, low traction launch, weight sensing, and all of that. Safety-wise, you get a bunch of the driver assist tech as standard, including adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, traffic sign recognition, rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitoring, and the cool camera game is also all standard, including the 3D surround camera, the 360 degree camera, you also have the clear sight rear view camera, and much more. I'm just stuck at a red light, but, oh, screen. That said, let's put this up against the Mercedes-Benz G-Class. Both the Defender and the G-Wagon have that retro luxury feel that people shopping in this pricing segment absolutely love. Whether you put this up against the G550 or the G63, the G-Wagon will cost you quite a bit more. The G550 starts at $131,750 and the G63 starts at over $156,000. Now, of course, the Defender isn't as luxurious as the G-Wagon. Both have that retro luxury performance feel, but the G-Wagon is like 10 times more luxurious than the Defender that I'm sitting in right now. And hey, look at the bright side. You'll save like thirty dollars to $50,000 if you go for the Defender. But there is another option that I'm going to throw at you. And this option comes from the Jaguar Land Rover family. The Jaguar F-Pace SVR. The SVR is powered by the same 5-liter supercharged V8, but there it makes 550 horsepower, that thing will do 0 to 60, not in 5 seconds, not in 4 seconds, but in 3.8 seconds. It's definitely more luxurious on the inside, and it has the same infotainment and tech as this Defender that I'm driving. But it costs $18,000 less, starting at $86,600, not to mention the exhaust on the SVR probably sounds just a little bit better. So let me know, would you drop $104,000 on a Defender V8, or would you save yourself some money and go for the F-Pace SVR. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on Tickety Talk. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care. Peace. I mean, this also sounds great. Oh, and go. I love it. If I had a hundred and four, actually, if I had a hundred and seven thousand dollars to spare, I would go for the D110 four-door Defender V8, and I would love it.